So, everyone, we've had quite the day, haven't we? Man, I am exhausted, I really need a shower, and now that everything's finally died down, I could do with some lunch right about meow. What about you, shorty pants? How are you holding up? Heard you got a... Uh, maybe just a little bit... Uh, I hope he's okay, too. But it's okay. No, no, no. I looked right at him. They were really there. Okay? Power, friendship, everything. It's a shame you don't have the echo and you couldn't see kind of, kind of stuff like that. Shut up. That's what I'm blaming it on. There we go. Problem solved. Well, damn, did he run off? Dude, dude, are you okay? Like, the Dothnir beat the crap out of you for one thing, and then, damn, when you pulled the eyes off, you got knocked flat on your ass. Are you sure you didn't hit your head on those stones again? No, I'm seriously worried. <laughs> he has suffered multiple brain injuries by this point. So I wonder where Tataru is. Is she down here still? Yes, she is. You okay? Yeah, maybe you should check on Shorty Pants a little bit when we when we get back. Cause yeah, yeah, growing boy needs his rest. Probably bruised to hell. I think he deserves some hot cocoa with marshmallows. And then some. Like extra fluffy pillows, to chocobo down, everything. Everything. I mean, I kind of want that too, but... I'm actually surprised you waited for me. Yeah, some lunch would be nice. Oh, no, 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 no! Don't sell yourself short! No pun intended. No, 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 no! Take a little pride in this, it's totally okay. Where the fuck is my sassy pants Alphano? I really miss him right about now. It's been like five minutes. <laughs> now you have not satisfied my concerns. I will totally pass the fuck out on this floor if that's what it takes. Now, lose it. Now, you've upset him. Well, send a fucking messenger over and say, hey, we're okay. I'm sure everybody around, like, all the Temple Knights around who are at least close enough to see what the hell was going on can figure out we kind of won. I mean, you all retreated and went back and the city's not currently being raised to the ground. It's very clear we won the day. Here, everyone around town is talking about it. Or at least they should be. Ungrateful bastards weren't exactly talking about it the first time I kicked Nidhogg's ass. The heroes of the hour return. We but did our duty, my lord. It was the memories of fallen friends and not our heroism which saw us through at the last. See, what I tell you, power of friendship solves everything in this expansion. Well, mostly everything. I gave every ons of my strength, but mine efforts would have counted for naught. Had the Warrior of Light not arrived to challenge the Great Worm. As a sworn knight of Ishgard, I had hoped to do more for my city. Uh, yeah, there's, there's not much you can do about a powerful, rage-filled, thousands and thousands of year old creature. Well, we cannot all be heroes, dear brother. 
let us put away our pride for a moment and revel in the valiant deeds of our comrade. For your sterling service to Ishgard, we salute you. Oh, that's such a nice thing to say. Thank you. And while we're on the subject of valiant deeds, I believe I myself have earned some small measure of recognition. Under my watchful command, the ballistas of the Outer Ward struck down a veritable swarm of Dravanian invaders. No, 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 don't give me cocky and back, no. No, you My can go Lord's die in the fire of hell. Certainly watchful. He bravely watched as the siege crews took aim, and continued to watch as countless wyverns met their end. Indeed, the ward's defenders proved so well drilled that my lord had little occasion to stop watching. Oh! Cinema Roll has stopped being a doormat for five minutes. Awesome! There will be time enough to determine who is most deserving of recognition later. Our friends are doubtless weary from their exertions. I had chambers prepared in expectation of your return. You are welcome to retire at your leisure. Okay, I'm, I'm only assuming that you have them with cocoa and marshmallows and extra fluffy pillows with, with chocobo down and maybe some meal or something because the way you're acting, it's more like, oh, I have this for you. Yeah, we live here now. Well, I don't need a special room for me. I live here, remember? I am most grateful for your hospitality, my lord, but I believe I shall pay a visit to the Temple Knights Infirmary. Pray excuse me. Our master Alfino has grown. The plight of his stricken brother in arms pains him more than his own hurts. Well, because it easily is conscious. I love how he's like, yeah, I'm totally going to follow Lucy's horse to the letter. I'm going to go check in at the manor and then fuck you guys. I like that. In which respect he has come to resemble you, warrior of light. Go then, visit the Azure Dragoon and grant him what comfort you may. Don't tell me how to live my life. But can I totally take that meal and those hot cocoa with marshmallows with me? That is indeed true. So how about we find him something that he has a reason to be optimistic about and pour himself into it? Maybe if y'all helped him with that, maybe he could fulfill his full potential. Well, you shouldn't, because I just fucking saved your ass. <laughs> oh, the last thing you should do is get pissy, potentially pissy with me, because I didn't take a nap in your household. Yeah, see, I live here. So, of course, back the way we came. Oh, hi, Sir Emmerich. As I get stuck on the chair. Yeah, it was like 10 minutes ago. See, at least he's smart enough. Well, I already suggested that it would be totally cool to just fall asleep on the floor in Estanian's room. I'd be totally down for that. Not like there's anything else we can do. It's not like we can play cards on his sleeping body or anything. Although that would be kind of funny to have him wake up and be like, What the hell are you guys doing? So 
So now we get a bit of an exposition dump. Sort of. Now what really kind of stinks about these scenes is be that they're... Not that I'm ungrateful for them, but they're kind of shoehorned in a bit. Because most of what Sir Emmerich is saying in these these this short conversation right here was already pretty much stated in some of the anniversary tales. And a lot of this information would have been nice to know beforehand rather than just kind of shoved in at the very end right here because knowing this information as it was obviously the anniversary tales were a bit quote-unquote newer so some people who had read them were already aware of this, but not everyone reads the outside information like that. And it does make a lot of things and a lot of interactions and a lot of the relationships make more sense. Once you know that context. And for the people who haven't read those stories, the context is all being shoved in at the very end right here. And it just does not do well for the characters. It's better than not having it at all. But it would have been nice to have these sort of things be flavor moments and NPC dialogue elsewhere rather than just, just shoehorned in about, oh yeah, we actually forgot to explain this part in the narrative itself. Because it, it, it is important. It's not just a fun fact about what happened in between everything for the people who really care. Like this like these relationships are very important to the story. Like Alphano's brotherly relationship with Justinian is, is extremely important to Alphano's character development. Extremely important. Because it's ultimately through Justinian that he actually becomes who he is and becomes much more friendly and compassionate. Because, partially because Justinian treated him like any other person. Yeah, he was a dick sometimes, but for every moment he was a dick, he was also very, you know, he, he was... He also kind of praised him, you know, he taught him how to do, pick up firewood, and he treated him not as a child, nor did he treat him with all the pomp and circumstance that everyone treated him before for him, you know, because he was a pampered and spoiled child. He just treated him like an ordinary person, and ultimately this is what Alpha, even Alphano himself kind of credits to being who he is that yeah he is just an ordinary young adult maybe he should start fucking acting like it and he does and the fact that obviously Emmerich and Estinian are besties you know brothers forged in blood sort of thing that really doesn't get much of an exposition or mention much um except when the in the the scene with Trace Fagar when Emmerich outright declares that yes, he's totally prepared to kill his best friend if it means saving people. Oh hell yes, we are playing all these scenes at once. Who the hell cares if this episode is forever? Because this, my friends, marks the end of the Dragon Song War. It is worthy of such a celebration. <gasps> Estinian. Okay, someone go up and hug him. Right meow. Chop chop, guys. Damn, Estinian, you got hot! Cease your mewling, boy. It grates my ears. And our dickhead Estinian is back. F forgive me. When I saw you awaken, I could not... It was such a relief. We feared you might never wake up. Oh, you fucking faker! Now, now, Estinian. If Master Alphano thought any less of you, you would still be Nidhogg's plaything. Or dead. I, I, twas but a jest. I thank you, Alphano. And you too, Warrior of Light. Quite how you managed to persuade Hraesvogger to aid in his brood brother's downfall I cannot imagine. But full glad am I that you did. <clears throat> Yet again, 
You have achieved the impossible. I, for my part, owe you an apology. When last we met, I did willingly loose an arrow at your heart. Can you forgive me? There is naught to forgive, Hamerick. You but acted in defense of Ishgard, as is your duty. Were you any less single-minded about it, I would not follow you into battle, nor trust you at my back. Besides, I had come to the self-same conclusion that I would have to perish for Nidhogg to be stopped. So let us dispense with the hand-wringing. I have heard enough mewling for one day. Okay, so can we play cards over your body and, like, stretch over you? That sounds like more fun. Oh! Let's just get a board game of, like, chess and just lay it all over him. The tendrils of Nidhogg's foul presence bound up every fiber of my being, usurping my senses, but I yet retain some trace of awareness. The worm's mind was as a vast and tumultuous sea. Endlessly its black waters churned, his grief and despair at Ratatoska's murder never calming, never receding. Driven by this surging current came wave upon wave of unrelenting rancor. Dude really needed a therapist. It was the very image of my own heart. There I saw the dark reflection of the hatred I felt after Nidhogg slew my family. When no path remained save vengeance against Dragonkind. Neither one of us had a choice. But I was blessed with something Nidhogg was not. Comrades and teachers to console and admonish me. Had I not had them to gainsay my obsession, it would surely have consumed me as Nidhogg's did him, and we would have been in all respects alike. Though his shade is banished, his spirit scattered upon the sea of clouds, I feel no joy at his passing. Where once I craved vengeance, I now crave rest. Lord Commander, my hunt is at an end. I would lay down the mantle of Azure Dragoon. Guess me blood, just say I quit. My friend. He has tired himself with too many words. I doubt not that he will make a full recovery, but he must be allowed some few days of quiet. Well, we can play board games and card games across his body quietly. I'm actually genuinely surprised they keep the headgear on in this scene. As much as I make jokes about my glasses are, are gone and being fallen off, it's a result of see these scenes being pre-programmed to so the expression is left on your face and thus it removes all headgear. But I'm surprised they don't do the same here. I mean, not that, that I'm a very pivotal character in this scene, but... I too must see my path to its end. Sleep well, my friend. But, like, imagine coming in here with, like, a full face helmet. Like, it would just look ridiculous for, for such a serious and somber reunion here. Well, I shouldn't say somber. Overly emotional, I guess, is the best, uh, better term to put it.
Following the battle with Nidhogg on the steps of faith, Sir Emery called an assembly that he might make his final proclamation as acting head of state. Well, I'm sure the church is finally happy about that. Are they even still bitching about, I like a new archbishop? It was there with one decree that the thousand-year rule of the archbishops was ended, paving the way for a new republic. And everybody's okay with this? The governance of Ishgard would now be placed in the hands of high and lowborn alike, their ranks represented by the newly founded House of Lords and House of Commons. Church was separated from state, the foundation for change had been carefully laid, and the reforms proposed by Ishgard's new government passed into law without incident. Oh, I'm calling this bullcrap on that. His duty done, Emmerich de Burel gladly stepped down from the Archbishop's dais, only to be raised unto the highest seat in the House of Lords. I am also calling bullcrap on that. I assume they mean without incident, as there was no rioting, looting, or pillaging. That kind of without incident. Though he strove at first to refuse this honor, the unexpectedly strident voice of the Count de Durandair left him little choice but to accept. And so it was that the winds of gentle revolution came to stir. So are they going to elect a new archbishop? Like, church and state are separate now, but the church still exists. Prominent among the many honored guests at Sir Emmerich's investiture were the ambassadors of Dragonkind, a fitting symbol of Ishgard's newfound peace. Can they get medals or something? Hell, I want a medal too, but... She must be so happy to see Vidovnir again. The people looked on in awe as he soared through the heavens on dragon back. And by their cheers did they hail him an azure dragoon for a new age. And this is the reason that I was kind of really upset that there is no more... Hi interaction between Alphano and Vidofnir because suddenly Emmerich and Vertfolnir are like besties now. Despite sharing a whole one scene together previously. But damn did Hustinian crawl out of bed pretty damn quick there. I recognize that Lance. So a lot of people seem to miss this, but yes, Hraesvalgar does gain his eye back. Thus were the notes of the Dragon Song rewritten. The din of war giving way to a rising litany of peace and hope. I find it kind of touching when riding on the back of his daddy. Surprisingly, he doesn't have a reaction to Itty Bitty Mitty's form, like... Tiamat does. So one thing I always kind of half wondered mostly in jest, was that because obviously the story is told from his kind of narration that he's been expositing over the scenes, in the sense of the, the, the real world, I guess, like, as in this universe, how many of it were creative liberties? 
Because I would find that very amusing if if half of this expansion we, we played was just a bunch of bullshit that he just made up to, to be either sound more poetic or just make a more compelling story. I, mean, I don't really honestly believe so, but I just think it would be really funny. So, are you gonna get the book autographed by me or what? So, question Did he actually jump out the window or did he just waltz out the front door and the windows just open because it's a nice breeze? I really wanted to play some damn board games across him. <sighs> no, before I talk to you? Yeah, no, no. We're, we're going into Tidal Root. Why? Because that is how we roll right around here. Well, silly Tidal Root doesn't have anything to say, nor does the little girl the Daphneer says, because she's asking still if oh she's like oh hey nidhogg's dead does that mean the white dragon will come back you just appeared in a cutscene where she was at a ceremony Ugh, silly gameplay sometimes guys gee one might think you were waiting for me said no and if you didn't want to say no you could have been like well I will until X amount of time that you find someone more suitable for the position there you go gee it's almost like no one actually gave a shit about that and it was more just juicy gossip course, would we expect anything less from him? Do you really think he was gonna just sit there in his sick bed to get better? He's not that kind of guy. I don't think he needs that assurance. I doubt he would have left if he didn't truly believe that already, friend. So while I walk back to the manor, uh, something quick just to, uh, to mention. That in the quote-unquote timeline, at least a few weeks kind of have passed in between the death of Nidhogg and the, for uh, the formation of the Republic. But even so, that is just way too damn fast. Like again, I'm assuming the, the without incident thing is more... You know, meaning no riot, pillaging, holding people hostage, throwing children off roofs kind of variety. But I doubt that everybody is going to be just, just this welcoming to this kind of change. Even if it's a change that pretty much benefits almost anybody. Because that was half the problem about two patches ago. When we revealed the truth and everything like that. That, oh, the Holy See was a bunch of fucking liars. Not that it really changed anything about their 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 day-to-day -day life, but... Look what, look what it resorted them to, because they just couldn't deal with it. Um, hi. Who are you? Oh, proper introduction. I like you. Aw, she's nervous. Now, my own personal little headcanon. 
is that they hired her because, yeah, they, not that we see everybody who works for this house or anything, but I'm guessing the presidents of Tataru has kind of reminded them that this place is a bit of a lack of female presence and companionship, so what better way than to hire somebody that fills that role, even if she is just a young girl. So that's what I believe, that's what I'm sticking with. Screw y'all. Oh, dude, it's fine. Dude, like, seriously, it's Nidhogg, okay? Threaten genocide against us all, I'd be pissing my pants too if I wasn't the Warrior of Light. It's cool, brah. It's cool. So yay, we get some goodies! Yeah, now that the skies are, are free from dragons at last, now we can actually fly places without threat of possibly being killed or burned down! Hooray! Okay, what are you gasters up to now? Oh my goodness, they have a names! Oh shit. Run! Run, girl, run, 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 run! God damn it, Thigur, you have to stop making these dramatic entrances. It's almost like Elidibus has been aware that she's been spying on him the whole time. Just a potential thought. Hooray! Uh, I don't need to know about the Orchestrion. K. thanks. Bye. So hope I'm gonna see if there's one quick dialogue piece, or if I possibly missed it. If I missed it, I will tell you exactly what it is. But we actually have a new quest here, which I will be taking care of in a special next time. It won't have any commentary, but it's basically a recap of everything that happens, and I think it's a uh, l just a love. Not only it works as a lovely recap, but. It, it just handles everything just, just so well and I love it. There's not going to be any commentary simply because I there's nothing I can really say there that I haven't already mentioned in some description or just bitching about something in any, any sort of way. But it is there if you guys want to watch it. Yay! Okay, alright. This is the line I was waiting for. So, yes. We are now official members of this household. We are considered family. Hooray! It's about damn time, but I am I am very glad that he thinks, even though Artie doesn't get very much character development at all, he's, he's just kind of there and he's dismissive of you at first and then oh, the morning light is coming in through the windows. I never actually noticed 
that they actually took the lighting of outside into account, even if you can't actually see outside. That is very interesting. That he, even though he's dismissive of you at first and then later becomes to respect you and maintains his respect of you, he doesn't really stand out as a character in, an, in his own right. He's just kind of there. He's not bad, but he's just kind of there. But I, but I do find it a, lo a lovely gesture that his first order officially now is count as, yeah, members of the family, presumably with all rights and privileges that go with it. Well, well, it's not like you have someone right next to you who actually knows how to summon carbuncles and, oh wait, even made his own. Tataru, why don't you ask him for lessons? I'm sure he'd be happy to show you a thing or two. All right. Alright, so that is going to be it. That is the end of the Dragon Song War, my friends! The only question is... Well, what do we do now? Because we technically don't know about... Everything that's going on with those lovely scenes with Elidibus. Because as far as we know, La Habrea and Eeorum were the last ones we've encountered. And they were... Kind of dealt with already. So... I don't hear any news about any primal threats, anything. What are we going to do? Are we going to have a vacation or something, maybe? That would be really awesome. I definitely think we earned a well-deserved vacation at this point. Let's go on a cruise ship somewhere. That sounds very nice. All you can eat dinners, everything, peace and quiet. Well, we get to just kind of hope on the Sahaga and don't summon Leviathan. But shh, shh, don't ruin the fun. Don't ruin the fun. Thank you very much for watching, friends. And we'll see what adventures await us next time.